Scientific studies carried out by POS Reform Academy and its partners have shown that it is possible to optimize the development of the embryo while it is still inside the egg. Here in the hatchery, right at the start of the chicken's life cycle, a positive, lasting economic impact can be achieved throughout the entire poultry integration. Genetic selection, improved nutrition and evolved management have produced huge improvements in poultry meat and egg production. In modern broilers, the growing chick's life on the farm is 25% less than it was 25 years ago to achieve a similar body weight. In the past, chicks spent just 20% of their total lifespan from egg to processing plant in the incubator. Today, they spend 33% of their lives in the incubator. This has augmented the role of the hatchery in the modern poultry meat production chain. As a hatchery technology company, PUS Reform's commitment to understanding the needs of the developing embryo is central to the company's product development program. That commitment formed PUS Reform Academy. The Academy is led by Dr. Marlene Borjan, PhD, who works with an experienced team of embryologists, poultry experts, incubationists, trainers and project managers. Pus Reform Academy's detailed continuous research and training program has identified two critical challenges to hatchery incubation in the future. The changing demands that come with genetic selection and the importance of maintaining chick uniformity. Genetic selection generates continuous improvement in pure breeding lines by choosing only the best parents for each successive generation. These pure breeding lines are used in a process called hybridization. We have a and all breeding companies have a system where we have nucleus farms where we keep our so-called pure lines. And these are uh, populations of purebred animals uh, where we apply the selection process. But for each broiler product and each layer product we use four different pure lines, A, B, C and D. The A and B lines, uh, which are going to give the males of the parent stock, are selected very heavily for broiler traits. So that is growth, feed efficiency, uh, conformation, so that means muscle deposition. The C and the D line are going to produce uh, the female lines, so the mothers of the broilers. They are selected also for feed efficiency, meat and growth, but more heavily than the male lines for reproduction characteristics. So in these lines we try to maintain at least a basic level of, uh, of reproduction quality. This selection process in these pure lines then needs to be translated into breeding stock that we sell to the industry. The parent stock farmers then receive males and females, put them together in one house, produce hatching eggs and these then are going to be hatched as the final broilers. So the broiler, which is put in the broiler house in the end, is an A, B, C, D cross. The important point is that it takes four years to produce the final broiler or layer hen. That's a four-year lead time to market for every new or enhanced commercial breed. These are the time frames that we have to think about when we think about genetic changes. And that makes life difficult for us, but also for everybody that is dependent on these changes in, in breeding stock. And that includes, of course, the hatchery managers and the producers that produce the hatchery equipment. By working closely with poultry breeding companies, Post Reform is able to see 10 years in the future to predict the impact of genetic changes on modern embryonic development. Genetic selection for different selection traits 
brings with it increasing variability in the physiology of growing embryos. We see variation in large and small eggs because that's natural. You have to deal with a flock that is aging. They start to lay eggs when they are teenagers or when the hens are about 28 to 30 weeks. Then they produce small eggs. So and when the flock is getting older and getting in peak production, they produce nice, good quality hatching eggs. When the flock is getting older, they not only produce bigger eggs, but also we see a bigger variation in shell quality. This is one source of variation. The other source of variation is the difference between breeds. The hatchery managers can only deal with variation when he has enough information about the origin of the eggs. We know that for different breeds, he needs different, uh, different incubation programs, so he should incubate them in separate incubators. With a focus on fast-growing, high-yielding breeds come substantial changes to the metabolism of the broiler. Those changes begin with the embryo inside the egg. The incubation process is certainly influenced by selection for rapid growth. In what way exactly it affects uh, this incubation process, we hardly know. The only thing we know is that the metabolic level during this embryonic process yeah. certainly has changed. That has been proven at least. That means that if we work with the chickens that have been selected for a more rapid growth, they have a higher metabolic rate, we see that in the incubation process and we see a higher heat production in these uh, eggs than 20 years ago, for example. To manage these high heat signatures effectively requires a breed and age specific environment for incubation. Besides the changing demands that come with genetic selection, Past Reform Academy's research and training programs have identified another critical challenge for hatcheries in the future the importance of maintaining chick uniformity. In agriculture, you see the demand for higher uniformity as a starting material. And this is also true for the chicken business, for the poultry business. So if we ask for a higher uniformity, this higher uniformity should also reflect in the starting material. That means in the chickens that come out of the hatcher. On the farm, the chick grows in a competitive environment. Larger chicks grow faster, while the smaller ones grow more slowly. This competition both increases and exaggerates weight differences in the flock. Therefore, it is important that we start with a uniform flock, which is greatly influenced by the spread of hatch. The wider the spread of hatch, that is the time between the hatching of the first chick and the last in a batch, the longer the first hatchlings must wait to access feed and water. Yet by narrowing that spread, uniformity is greatly improved. There are many factors affecting hatch time. Some of these are outside our control. But there is one important area in which we can greatly influence the duration of the hatch window, as well as subsequent chick uniformity and FCR the use of modular, single-stage incubation practices. I think single-stage gives the opportunity to control the environment and the different factors of the environment, like temperature, humidity, point per point, day per day, so that we can match it better to the needs of the embryos at that stage of development. And therefore, I think single stage not only is better, but also may lead to some higher hatchability or at least higher uniformity and a smaller spread of hatch than multi-stage incubation. Synchronizing the hatch as closely as genetically possible is feasible with the knowledge we have at our disposal today. With modular single stage incubation, a combination of preheating, homogeneous temperature control and the ability to fine-tune the egg's environment enable us to actively manage the broiler or layer while still in the egg, 
to produce the shortest possible hatch window. Uh, only during the whole time during the incubus in the incubator. If we uh, look at what the requirements of that individual egg, that embryo is first developing. And then as it grows, it starts to produce heat as it, uh, through the metabolism of the nutrients within the side, inside the egg, and produces heat. And where it produces heat, then we need increased cooling capacity. So in the beginning of the incubation life of that uh, embryo, it needs more heat. In the center, it needs probably about This ability to actively manage temperature throughout the incubation process is the single most important factor for achieving uniformity. Temperature is very important for, um, for the development of the, uh, of the embryo. And an optimum temperature is 37.8 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees of Fahrenheit. And we know when the temperature is higher, the embryo development goes quicker faster and when the temperature is lower then there is a, a decrease in, uh, in growth rate of the embryo. And this means that we have, when we have a non-homogeneous temperature in the incubator, this means then we have chicks that hatch earlier because they face a higher temperature in the incubator and we will have chicks that uh, develop at a slower rate and hatch later. And that is what we do not want because we know when the chicks hatched earlier and they are too long in the hatcher, then they dehydrate and they do not perform so well in the farm. Pus Reform's single-stage incubation technologies enable hatcheries to manage the all-important hatch window for the smallest spread of hatch and therefore to reliably deliver greater chick uniformity. In a traditional multi-stage incubator, it is not unusual to find the hatch window spread over 40 to 68 hours. This is far too long for the first chicks that hatch to go without food and water. Traditional single-stage incubators, while certainly shortening the hatch window significantly, may still produce a window of 24 to 40 hours. However, in practice, in hatcheries using modular single-stage incubators, we can decrease the hatch window by a further 12 hours. In subsequent processing, a uniform flock would deliver much improved feed conversion and a better breast meat feed conversion ratio. This is repeatedly demonstrated by modular single stage results analysis and field data. If we summarize the findings of these studies, let's suppose a conservative difference in FCR of just four points that's equivalent to roughly 80 grams of feed per 2 kilogram broiler. One machine will hold 115,200 eggs, running 17 three-week hatch cycles each year. If we calculate with equally conservative hatchability at 85% and livability at 95%, we can see very quickly the impact of single-stage incubation in savings of more than 126,000 kilograms of feed each year. Depending on where in the world you are and the feed prices you pay, that could mean savings of anything from 15 to 20,000 US dollars per machine per year. And that's a sizable contribution to the bottom line. Here in the hatchery, right at the start of the chicken's life cycle, a positive, lasting economic impact can be achieved throughout the entire poultry integration. Pus Reform's modular single-stage incubation technologies have been developed precisely for that reason. Pus Reform. Setting standards for uniformity. <laughs>